Do you ever, did you ever have the feeling of being part of some Generation X and with like lots of opportunities and nowhere to go or all these, this feeling that maybe, I don't know, maybe it was just my puberty or maybe it was actually a generation thing? I remember reading, you know, as a, as a fan of British music and, you know, the Kinks and the Who and reading, you know, about Tuesdays at the Marquee, you know, about the Who and this is 15 years into them. So this is 1979 I'm reading about the Who and I'm 14 or something and I'm, I'm sitting there and wishing, you know, angry at my parents for me not having been born a lot earlier, even though they would have only been, they were the same age as the people in the bands, but it was just that this, this is, I wish I could have lived during Hendrix. I wish I could have lived, you know, to be in these clubs to see The Who. I wish I could have been part of the mods, you know. And then, you know, years later, when this, I, I do remember having this realization after, you know, the record was out and all of a sudden Seattle and this thing was happening and, you know, and I just moved up there and, you know, the year before the record came out or something. And I felt this community and I thought, like, and I'm, at this point I'm 26 or 27, I'm just like, wow, I think this, uh, yeah, we're actually part of something. Like, I, I'm actually part of this thing. I, I, who knew? And it doesn't happen that often, you know? It doesn't really, at least not on that scale, for better or worse, but um, it doesn't happen that often. There was a realization, you know, that we were part of something bigger. And it was pretty exciting until the wave kind of broke on our heads. And then it, it you know, that, that moment of exciting, of, you know, catching the wave and riding the wave before it came up and, you know, slammed us pretty hard. It, it was, it was pretty neat for about a week. I actually think... A couple it, days, maybe. I don't know. I think something like that hasn't happened since then. You know, maybe the digital world doesn't allow real movements to grow or something. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I mean, yeah, when we all first started, it was sort of pre-internet, pre-computer, almost pre-MTV, you know, so we were left to our own devices, and I think ultimately that helped that helped our music to become our own thing. And it probably happens on smaller, uh, smaller levels that just don't get tapped into. Right. Um, and maybe that's a good thing. But you know, there's really yeah. good scenes in like DC, um, uh, Portland. Yeah, there's um, a great new lo-fi scene in San Diego that, I was, that I've been reading mm. about, this band called Waves, so, mm. you know. Mm -hmm. It's out there. Now you you're re you have reissues of ten and you have reissues of the other albums. Um, is that something you? Is that an idea that you really support and like? And you know, looking back again, or is it sometimes maybe even painful to look back too much? Uh, the only you know you just look at it as wanting to put out a piece of quality, you know, something of of, of high quality that that um, people can glean more off of than they remember from the, you know, offer them new things that they haven't seen before or heard before. And, and it's just, it's more of a quality issue that takes time. And, you know, outside of that, I think we were just about to start this, this record, this last one, when we were kind of working with the artwork and all that. So it's really just a, it's just a time thing and making sure it's, it's, you know, the best quality as possible, you know, good vinyl and, good artwork and um, you know because it does it you know and then we had to decide whether it was going to cost a little bit more and have because in order to make it feel solid it's going to have to cost a little bit more and we you know it's hard you have to make these decisions you know um, but in, in, ultimately I think we're proud of it I mean I didn't listen to any of it but I certainly <laughs> helped put the books together and all that Would you rather not look back so much? Uh, you know, it's enough playing the songs, you know, you know, almost on a nightly basis. You know, I, you look back a lot when you're in a band for this long. You know, it just, it just kind of happens. And, you know, you write songs when you're a certain age, and then you end up singing them over and over. And it's funny, because it's, it's almost like 
that kid is is reminding me of things that I used to think of and that I should not forget, you know? It's like I was sending myself messages in a time capsule. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, I mean, for, for a fan like me, it's, it's <clears throat> similar, very similar. So I couldn't say that the songs have lost their meaning or something just because I'm 20 years old. Yeah. How is that for you? That's how it is with a lot of songs too, you know, you, you hear like protest songs, you know, you know, four years ago what we've gone through with yeah. our country and, the, and the, the politicians who are representing us as American citizens, you know, it's very tough and, and, and then you come across songs like, uh, you know, Masters of War or, you know, these, these Dylan diatribes or a Pete Seeger song or a Woody Guthrie song, these were written, you know, almost a hundred years ago, some of them, and it's absolutely applies to what happened in the last, you know, few years and in some ways it's still going on. So sometimes it's a shame, you know, when you sing something like Masters of War, you play it, you you just you wish it lost its relevance. So you can't wait for the day when it loses its relevance, you know. The other thing, it's an incredibly long song and you just don't want to have to remember those words anymore. <laughs> To look into the past one last time, um, I'm wondering if um, if the mid '90s maybe were the the hardest time for the entire. I mean, maybe something died when Kurt Cobain died. Maybe it was just too much, too much commercial pressure. Yeah, I mean that was sort of a galvanizing, you know, uh, time when the air was taken out of everyone's sails. You know, it really. You know, it's like, it was just such a shock, and um, it made, I don't know, it made me rethink some things about, you know, what I was doing, but it never, I never really lost focus of, you know, why I was doing it personally, um, but, uh, yeah, I suppose, you know, you could pinpoint that, that event as, you know, one, one, you know, one reason why Some of the bands started to implode, but there there was a a variety of reasons. You know, it wasn't it wasn't just that, but um, it was certainly uh, pretty, a pretty tough time because we lost you know we lost a really good friend, and and it happened in such a violent way and everything. And so it's just there's always questions when that happens, and sometimes you have to like question yourself. Sometimes like you know, and like Matt was saying, you know, it happened. You know. Other bands were going through things and it wasn't, you know, they were imploding for this reason or that reason or this pressure or that misunderstanding. And, and, and then you think, you know, it's such a good job and you, you, you know, you, you don't really set out thinking that it could be a job because that's a bit in the clouds, you know. But to, you know, do this thing that you love that's your lifeblood, it's the one thing that's kind of been yours all your life and almost like a religion or, or you know like a parent's love you go to mu music for comfort and strength and then to have it you know to not be able to do it or, or to have to break up a band because of this and that it's, it's really something you fight against you know and I, I it's funny to think that it would be that hard and I think that um, you know if, if Why, how could music be so hard? How could making music and surviving as a band and communicating with people, and how could it be so hard? Apparently it is. Um, and you know what you said before too about freedom and having freedoms, whether it's with, in how we distribute music or whatever, that's the other thing. It's like, if you can't have freedom as a, as a musician or as a, as a kid who grew up wanting to be in a band and then gets to be in a band, and you know, if you can't have freedom, then like who can? You know, what about the plumbers? They're totally fucked. <laughs> you know, or what about other jobs? But they don't have to be a hero for an entire generation and carry well, so we much. we don't either. I mean, that's not... It shouldn't be that. It's the music. It's not the people, right? So it's just, you know, we're to the point where it's like, well, if, if, if you can't have fun and be in a band, and if you can't, like, have feel like you're free and be in a band, and, and if it can't feel easy, at least sometimes, then it feels like... Everything's fucked. You know, it's like we're being a musician is almost like a barometer of 
It's like the canary in the coal mine. If the, if the musicians aren't having a good time, <laughs> the whole planet's fucked. 